Tonight's show is brought to you by Burton Automotive. Alright guys, and welcome back for another edition of Night Time. And uh, big grand final week. Mm. Exciting times mm. for some of us uh, in the men, some of us in the women. So uh, a good weekend for all. It certainly was for you guys. Yes. <laughs> Not for oh, me. that's right. We knocked you out, didn't we? Yeah. But uh, good for the for the Knights. Um, we were such a bad, well, you know, not the best of years. So, you know, probably have something to actually cheer about at the finals time for first time for a while. But, yeah, the Panthers too. Are they beatable? Who's Who can beat them? Will, pa- will the Eels beat them? Every team is beatable. That's what I'm saying. Are Eels the team to beat them? I mean, well, they've beaten them twice this year, haven't they? So they've got a bit not of... Not the finals. Not, no, but they've got the runs on the board, so... They beat them twice this year. And what ground was it at? One was at... It would have been at... Bank first? Bank, Bank West. Or whatever it's called now. Yep. The other and one was at mm. uh, The other one was... Pat, I think, didn't that particular week we had the, most of the Panthers out with Origin Duty? Was that the week? Could be. I'm not sure. Mm. But saying that too, Parramatta would have had a few out for Origin as well. They would have, yes. So it'll be an even match-up, but um, looking forward to it. But, um, yeah. We might get straight into it, eh? Because a, a good show tonight with a special guest coming on very soon. So, um. Before we do get started, though, I just want to say a massive apology to our oh. uh, editor, Adam. Happy All that birthday, birthday announcements last week, I forgot to mention Adam. So I'm really sorry and... No! <laughs> Waiting for you to sing. You can. Let's go. All right, ready? Yep. Okay. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Adam. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Hip hip. Hooray. Hip hip. Hooray. Hip hip. Hooray. All right. There you go, mate. We do apologize, but um, Sometimes it gets a little bit too much here and we forget about a few things. So well, uh, I'm going to chuck in a little birthday joke just for you, Adam. It's called Expensive Birthday Present. Are you going to do your jokes now? No, I'm hmm. going to do one just for Adam. It's a birthday joke. Oh. A middle-aged guy is out to dinner with his wife to celebrate her 40th birthday. He asks her, what would you like for your birthday, Julie? A Mercedes, a fur coat, a diamond necklace. She says, Bernie, I want a divorce. He replies, I wasn't planning on spending that much. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, what are you looking at me for? <laughs> I don't have that kind of money. Happy birthday, Adam. Yeah, happy birthday, mate. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it, eh? Yep. Um, yeah, so Night of the Round, which we don't have. So, or we do. So, mm. we're just doing the player of the round, so to speak, now. Mm. So, we can do it from any. You know, any uh, team, any comp, so, yeah. yeah. All right, well, do you want me to uh, kick off proceedings? Sounds good to me. All right, mate. Um, so, my three points this week goes to Dylan Edwards. Um, far and far and away, he's punching above his weight, in my opinion. Um, I mean, if, he, if it wasn't Tedesco in his time, he'd be definitely an origin fullback. 100%. You know, and I hope they pick him on the on the World Cup tour. As a backup fullback, because um, yeah, he's he's playing the best football that I've seen okay. in his life. I ask you this question here: the Daily M's, he gets fullback of the year, or even Daily M player of the year. How do they not pick him? It's a tough question, isn't it? Mm. Because it's been said that they won't because Tedesco and Latrell. Mm. But if this bloke wins one or two of those awards, they don't pick him. Mm. You know, Latrell can play centre though if they really need to. To be honest, like no disrespect to Latrell, he's a good player, but he's no Dylan Edwards. No, 
nah. and what this bloke offers. Just go have a look at his stats. He's miles in front of the uh, in run meters mm-hmm. to second place, which second place is Clint Gufferson, another quality player, and he's second, but he's miles in front of him mm-hmm. as well. So it just shows how good this kid is. I think the experts gave him a ten out of ten. Yes, effort. You know, there might have been one little miss out where I think he knocked the ball at, hmm. at the thing, but that was really nothing. But they but say Cleary is the key to Penrith. Yeah. If he's the key, he's the padlock. Mm. Like, they just go together. Then pe- they're, when he's not there, the team's a different team. Mm. And, yeah, I just think he just goes about his work, no fuss. It's a great and spine, isn't it? To be honest, I know this is a big call, but... And I'm a big fan of Pongus, but I'd probably put him at somewhere else on my team. But mm. if when you're picking your team, which we might do next year, uh, next year, sorry, next week, our team of the year. When you pick your team of the year, he's my first player pick. Dylan Edwards, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Um, so two points. I'm going to go Millie Boyle from the from the Knights. Um, I watched this game, and she was probably that was probably her best game mm. in the NRLW this season. Like I know a lot of the girls have probably outshone her, which is good because mm. she's the she was a key figurehead that come to the Knights. And um yeah, I'll give her two points and I'm gonna give one point actually to Mitch Moses. Not for his game, but the fact that he missed his mm. the, the birth of his first child was a mm-hmm. an outstanding effort to um hard to do. Hard to do. So yeah. um yeah, so um, yeah, I'll give Mitch Moses one point this week. Well, his wife's now got a bargaining chip for the rest of their lives, mm, doesn't she? Mm, mm. You weren't there for the birth of my first child, our mm, first child. True. Blackmail. Mm, yours now. Oh, my turn. Sure is. Okay, I'm going to be biased, but uh, my three, two, and one all go to Brian Tuttle because I think that was possibly the funniest and the best try I've ever seen from a winger that is not that fast. How it just shows like he's only like. Knee height or grasshopper. He's got powerful legs, but he's not. But it just shows you how strong he was and the determination. Mm. You will not stop me. As he said, I'm not that fast. Mm. Well, I still think he's pretty fast, but, you know, he knew he wasn't going to get there, but you were just, he was, nothing was going to stop him. He was mm. playing 10 pin bowling. And it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy to bump off, to be honest. Well, I thought Cody wasn't a bad defender, so he must have, Ty oh, must no, have, had, he's a good defender, Ty, yeah. Ty must have had spiders on him. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Tuttle was too good. Mm. Will Hall, Tuttle. Um, well, that's another key to Penrith winning this weekend, I believe. Like The work he does as a winger, you could say he's like an extra forward. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, he'd have to be up there with the run moves, probably the, one of the biggest wingers. Have to be. Highest run moves. But I've gone out on the limb here, and I've done two lots of three, two, and one. Because I can. And Edward's got my free. Absolute stellar performance from him. And all year. Um, to all. Speaks for himself. And I couldn't... There was... Oh, I'll tell you what. The one... Or even... You know, I could have given points to half the team. But I found it hard to leave... Um, Moses Leota out. Especially for that hit on Latrell Mitchell. Mm. It was good that was a good hit. I, would you go as far as saying that could have been what put Mitchell off his game for the rest of the night? Mm. No, I just don't think they... I just don't think um, they kicked... I don't, they didn't really kick the ball to him in that second mm. half, didn't they? So yeah. that's where I'd say Mitch, uh, Wonga Blake's having nightmares of bomb raids for mm. the next week. The next couple of days. As I say, they're going to come sailing down on him. He dropped another one, didn't he, on the weekend? Yeah, poor bugger. I feel <laughs> sorry for him. But, um, you know, you could... And also, I found kick out. I wanted to give him a point as well because a lot of people go, oh, he didn't do much. If you actually sit there and watch him, what kick out does in defence is phenomenal. Like, even just them charge downs and the, the um, kick pressure he puts on the halfbacks and things like that. It's huge to the Penrith winning. And, I mean, they're going to miss that next year. But, I mean, then you could also throw in uh, Fisher Harris didn't play bad. Spencer. I mean, it was a pretty good all-round performance, I thought. But um, also, in in the girls, I went to Mika Upton. I thought she's key to Newcastle winning this weekend. Plays like that again where it go a long way to winning. Millie Boyle for what you said. And... 
Another one I gave was uh, Johnson. Just mm. never fails week in, week out there. Young Nova Casher and just she she's a you know big solid girl, but she runs like a bloody like a fullback mm. or a winger. I, I reckon she's probably very close to getting the women's player of the year. Which she'll be prop of the year. Prop definitely. I think I think she'll be prop of the year, and I mean to win that in front of Millie Boyle, you know, yeah. you're good. So yeah. Yeah, I think, and she doesn't win it. I think there's something wrong. you know, obviously with Millie being there too, having a great influence on... A clamour job? Yeah, and, mm. and Caitlin emerging this mm. year. So, you know, kudos to, for Millie for... I think I read too that Caitlin Johnson started at halfback. Did she? Um, playing in a, one of the competitions, playing a halfback. So okay. M- might explain a little bit too, but... Oh, mm. Powerhouse, but... Mm. Anyway, and uh, that was my free two and one. So we might go into what caught my eye, and we can start with you, darling. Corey, he's talking to you. Oh no! Oh, are you too, babe. <laughs> 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 oh, we'll start with you, Corey. All right. All right. Well, I don't really want to harp on it, but the standard of refereeing on the weekend. Mm. Um, All right, you've started me. Yeah, yeah. I know. But look, wouldn't you think? In the finals, you'd want your best referees to make the best decisions. So Klein's been sorry to cut you off here. Klein's yeah. been appointed the number one official for Sunday. Mm. Do you agree? What's the other options? Uh, who was the G- Gavin Atkins? I thought his mm. name. He's the, he's the actual bunker mm. judge. Bring back Gavin Badger. Bring back Bill Harrigan. Well, Casey Badger's refing the women's. Yeah, well, to be honest, as a video referee, I think she's great. As a video ref. That's Adam G. Mm. I know his brother, Willie. That's a Harley joke. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Okay, you were saying? Yeah, um, I was just saying, look, uh, you'd, you'd want the best rest them yeah, out there and, you know, they're just... I'm just making bad decisions. Mm. It mm. drives you, know? you insane. Absolutely. Are they though, or are they trying to guide a certain team into the finals? Well, we well, have to I'm check their TIB accounts, won't you? Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to sound like I'm saying that someone's corrupt or biased, but it, how they can make these mistakes, mm. you've got to ask yourself, mm. does the NRL want certain teams in there? They weren't just little mistakes. They were No. Like I said man, before, you know, about Crichton's tackle. Mm. Try. I'm sorry. How he did not, you know, a lot of Penrith were down there ready to get the ball back. Like, mm. Souths are ready for a kick. They knew it was a try. Mm. Everyone knew it was a try except for, well, obviously the referee because they don't seem to know what's going on. Mm. And the bunker. It goes back to my thing where we need to employ a bunker system and a bunker, you know, committee where there's not just all different ones each game. Mm. Need to have a couple for, you know, if it's... Because they're just not getting it right. The Charlie Staines no try got me, but I have got no idea. Like the obstruction, like he was nowhere near no. the play. Well, that wasn't Ashley Klein's fault. He actually awarded the try, and then it went up to Sutton, the video well, ref. Yeah, well, say no. Well, that, well, that explains it. Mm. But see, that's the thing. Like, how does Sutton's interpretation of that rule be different to everyone else's? Mm. And we have to get it black and white, otherwise we're never going to change it. You're going to have all these different problems. Same with when Appy scored to make it 12-6. Now, the ref, referee of, on Klein, it was Klein, when he, made, he, he said no try. So obviously it might have been too quick for him. He went upstairs. Mm. They went, it must have been 30 views on it mm. to try and find a reason not to give it. Yeah, 100%. It was on the line. But once again, the ref was right on top of it. How That's couldn't right. he see it? Mm. But you did right. They were trying to find a way to take it off him. Mm. And I'm not saying they're cheating, but they were trying to gift Souths. Honestly, they wanted Souths in. Mm. Did they want the you know? Oh, I don't know. Or they wanted at least Souths at the at the half time. Mm. But to well, what was it three disallowed tries? Penrith mm. got four all up. Four all up. Two of them should have been tries, according to Ennisley. So there you go. Mm. So you tell me, okay, why are they not dropped for this week? Because they're some big blunders. 
Mm. And then you're going into the final dance. Okay. Such a thing like a grand final that is such a big thing. Should we have more officiating people on the game? Do we go back to two referees to that and maybe and help throw an extra person in the bunker because they can't get it right now? I don't know what the answer is, really. They've got that much technology out there. They still can't get it right. Do we need a little TV on the sideline too, like the NFL? So when it's getting... Uh, oh, okay, big screen. Why can't the referee look at the big screen as it's getting mm. reviewed and say to, you know, like Gavin Badge or whatever, or whoever's up there, say, yeah, no, nah, mate, I think that was a try. Have a look mm. at that there. Yeah, yeah. Get it right. Because, mm. I mean, if... If that was my team and we got dotted like that in the grand final on the weekend, you'd be you'd be rabble, wouldn't you? For the start of right. Yeah. Anyway, well, that was my call. My, I hope this week that they mm. they get it right because you know mm. because some decision will cost the team in a grand final, and mm-hmm. you know, like just. Well, it's yeah. like even through the year, a few times the Knights got dotted a few different decisions, and I'm like, look, I can handle us losing, but we don't need help to lose. Yeah. Let us, you know, we can handle losing on our own accord, mm. but not when it's been decided by some mm. crucial uh, decisions. Mm. But anyway, well, what caught my eye was Cody Walker going off at the Penrith trainer. Yes, um, because the Penrith trainer was apparently having a dig at Jed Cartwright. Um, I'm not exactly sure what was said, but it had something to do with Cartwright's back injury, his previous back injury. Um, and it's since come out that it, he was actually... The trainer was talking to Dylan Edwards because it was recorded. Um, so Cartwright has spoken to the trainer and they've they've made peace. But I believe that the trainer deserves an apology from Cody Walker. 100%. Okay. The trainer has a go at Cody Walker over nothing. And it comes out that the trainer was wrong. The trainer would be dropped. Mm. The trainer would be fined. And he would be forced to make a public apology. So why is Cody Walker getting off this scot free? But who started this crap in the first place? Because it's put a bad taste again in people's mouths. You get on the internet and mm. it's Penrith this, Penrith that. Like salty. It's, just, it's tall poppy syndrome. Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah, and salty losers as well. Mm. I mean, mate, we lost all year. So did we. Get used to it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But... Oh, he should be made to apologise. Mm. I don't care. I don't care who he is, what race he is, what nationality he is, what colour his eyes are. Whatever. Everyone should be tarred with the same brush, mm-hmm. and he should apologise. And if someone did it to him too, I'd be saying the same thing. They should mm. apologise. Like that's made something out of nothing. Mm. So he apologises. We move on. Mm. That was that what caught your eye? Mm. And then another one where Moses was it his teammate that grabbed his jersey and he fell over, and he he got up and started crying. Well, not crying, but started complaining. Mitchell Moses. Yeah, there was a few where they uh, did that. I must admit, for well, Gary's probably going to start putting pins <laughs> in me back. But you watch the Parramatta Eels and they'll see Gufferson. He's huge on it. He'll stand there and he'll go, oh, 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 like that all the time for a penalty. Put his arms up for the people listening. Yeah, and... Um, Reminds me of Jeff Toovey. Yes, it does. But then, I mean, if it works for him, it's, it's what happens. But I just don't like the milking. There was one on the weekend where he was milking it and then he was, the rest said, don't stop milking it and he got up and played the ball and he was fine. I thought, it needs to be so. If they're blatantly milking it, Turn around and penalise him. Queen Gutho. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not saying nothing because you could pull our pants down this week. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying not to because I don't want karma to bite me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you but, might, be, um, might be trying to do the impersonation of the Macarena again. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what caught my eye? Ow, oh, my eye! Ow, 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 You know, I'm a big fan of the, the rough side of footy. And we're watching... Paul Spencer down out for the count. Next thing you know, he's up and they're taking him off. Mm. And he's having a go at old mate in the sideline, wanting to take him out the car park. Yeah, I think he realised what actually happened on the big screen. And when once everybody, what, what that, that he's like, oh, let's take him on. Yeah, but you see his uh, word again all the way off the sideline. Yeah. Pussy. 
Pussy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully yeah. they had to um they had to uh, give um, a fair bit of space between when oh, Spencer yeah. went into the <laughs> into the dressing sheds and Tan Milne had to wait like two minutes behind him. Well, he's he's w- one that you wouldn't really want to have the knuckle of, would nah. you? Well, that's yeah. what Freddie Fitler said. He lo- don't mind a bit of a knuckle. Mm. So uh, he reminds me a bit like Jesse Sue too. Not one you'd want to get on the wrong side of. Just those. I think they got that background. To, yeah, no Hanks. But hopefully he brings it this weekend because it will make a good... Uh... I'm just wondering where we're sitting too. Are we in the bunch of Parramatta supporters? I don't know. I think they're spread out. Hmm. They come out of the woodwork, have they? Tickets were that hard to get. I yes. think mean, anyone just took what they could. All right. I wasn't going to say it till later, but I am now. What has absolutely cheesed me off this week is how their ticketing system is done. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of upset, disgruntled fans out there, hard-working fans that can't get tickets. And then you get some scumbags. I'll say it loosely because I don't care. Because that's what it is, that are charging like thousands and thousands of dollars for a couple of hundred dollar tickets. Mm. And if you, it should be made illegal. And I've got a few names of a few people. Apparently it is. They're not supposed to sell tickets for any more than 10% of mm. what they paid for it. Okay, well, I contacted a couple today, and I even told a couple of them that I was going to name and shame them because I think it's absolutely disgusting. But we got tickets. Um, we were looking for the elite tickets, and we couldn't get them. And they were 600 and something dollars. They're going up to 700 Okay, say $700. A bloke sell on seven? Yeah, on eBay. For $11,500. Wow. That's what the bids were up to. There. So, also another bloke I contacted today, he had two in this bay, two in that bay, four in another bay. And I said to him, so why you got so many different areas? Wouldn't answer. So he's just gone and bought every one he could, mm-hmm. knowing that they're going to sell at hotcakes. And now, also, apparently, Parramatta got access to the ticket's 24 hours. 24 hours. I was just early. about to say that. Yeah, yeah, as soon as they won the, the match. So that yeah. is absolutely disgusting as well because then, okay, if your team's not in it, you don't want to go and spend that kind of money because, you know, money's too hard to come by. So then it's disadvantaged Penrith. It's disadvantaged Parramatta in the women's one as well. So that should have all went on sale. Nine o'clock Monday morning. Hmm. Um, But, yeah, I think the people that have bought these tickets and make, you know, spending making people pay big dollars, absolute scum. Scum of the earth. And I don't care what anyone says, but it should be made illegal. I think we've got a new segment for what next year. It says, what's cheesed off Smitter? Mm. Well, it is, mate. Like, you know, there's so many people out there that working hard, you know, day in, day out, and would like to go, and they can't do it because idiots have done this mm. to make a dollar mm. or two. Mm. I'm traumatised from the whole ticker tech experience yesterday. Nine o'clock, oh, eight thirty. I went online and you had to wait and wait. I ended up somehow getting two good tickets on the halfway line. Went to pay for them because they give you ten minutes from where to go. From the minute you get in there, you got ten minutes to to say yes, I want those tickets. Yeah. So I got to the paying screen. I thought they had afterpay, and I thought that's probably the quickest way out of here. Mm-hmm. I clicked afterpay. I've got like a three thousand dollar limit, so I thought it's going to be no drama. Yeah. Wouldn't accept that payment. So then I put my card in, which I knew there was money in there. And again, it said payment not accepted. And then it threw me out. So I lost those two good tickets. I cried. She wasn't happy. If I was home, probably would have been dead. But, um, yeah. I, I was devastated. Like, you see it now. Like, a couple we contacted today, too, for a bloke at work. Uh, how much? Best offer. No, well, that's not right. No. And mind you, up in the nosebleed section, like this one, this one here too, we contacted. It was right. You can't wouldn't get any high. It was right mm. back in the back where the where the pigeons are, mm. and two back there. So you'd be watching little ants run around the mm. field. Mm. How much you reckon for two tickets back there? Five hundred each. Really? Yes. Wow, that was just a guess. Mm. Thousand bucks for both of them. I said pass. You're a joke. Oh, and. It needs to change for next year. Mm. And it needs to be made more... I know they say you can't add it more than 10%. You shouldn't add more than what you pay for. 
If you don't want to go or you can't go no more, that's fine. Get your money back. Everyone's happy. But to go out there trying to make money on it, is, I think it's disgusting. Anyway, that's what cheese me off. But uh, we might take a short break and uh, settle down and be back shortly. <laughs> Have a Valium. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, welcome back. And it's time, that time of the weekend, time where we go across the ditch. And uh, come in, Scotty. How's it going, guys? Hey, champion, how are you? Very, very well. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Made a couple of cracking games on the weekend. Yeah. There was um, actually four cracking games, actually. Let's count the women's. Yeah, they were actually pretty good games, too. And, uh, yeah. Bit of an upset there, so to speak. The Eels doing the minor premier of the Roosters. Yeah, I guess you'll be happy about that. It'd be um, bit, of, bit of odds now for the Knights to take that out. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess it just proves who's better on the day. And I mean, it's it proved with Parramatta. They were just better than the, uh, the Roosters on the day and beat them as well. Yeah. But, mate, we'll get first into the Cowboys and... Uh, Riverworms, uh, Cowboys Wait. 20, Eels 24. Uh, Eels were the first team into the grand final. Yeah, well, uh, that was um, basically decided by a metre and a half forward pass, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, the old NFL <laughs> comes in, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Another thing there, we, Graham Ennisley came out today and said, yeah, we got it wrong, it was slightly forward. Um, slightly. <laughs> oh, the definition in the dictionary, slightly, does not mean, you know, four or five metres forward. But, yeah. Yeah. I mean, accidents happen. I mean, the Cowboys did a forward pass, too. That sort of, I think. Apparently. I don't think it cost them the game, though. Parramatta were just too good. Oh, that's right. That's what I mean. It was. But what I'm getting at is the linesman was right there. How yeah. he, How he didn't pick that up. Is beyond me. Mm. Like once again, yeah. what are we paying these gooses to do on the sideline? Because that's what it is. It's a mockery. Yeah. They, they stand there doing nothing, and if that cost, okay, that was Parramatta playing Penrith this weekend, and that won them the grand final. There would be riots. I think they're scared to make a call these days. Well, don't be there. Mm. If you are too scared to make a call, you are in the wrong game. Mm. Well, why can't the bunker? Hundred percent, hundred percent, mate. Why can't the bunker? Yeah. Okay, I guess they can't rule on every forward pass, but if it's blatant forward pass like yep. that, yep. and yep. they're watching exactly. the same game that we are, why can't he go? Oh uh, yeah, right over. Uh, actually, that was that far forward. It was ridiculous. You know, no yep. one has. To, and then if they're wide up to him, no one has to hear anything, and the referee calls it. Well, it makes the referee look like a better person too. Mm. Yeah, but. Like, uh, also, when they review tries, the first thing that the bunker looks at, say, say if it's a kick or something, first thing the bunker looks at is if all the players are on side. Yes. They've got that technology, they've used that technology for forward passes. 100%. Mm. See, this is, I think they look into too much with other things. <coughs> Excuse me. And not enough with things like that. Hmm. Um, but like you ask yourself, what call has a linesman made in the last okay, say last three weeks that you can justify him being on the sideline? Not one that I can remember. That's right. Yeah. So, so do we get rid of the linesman and have some in goal judges or something? You know what I mean? How they used to have the touching goal judge? Because to me, I think it's just a waste them standing there on the sideline. Would there be too many? It seems that the oh. Sorry, you go, Collie. No, no, I was just going to say, would there be too many stop starts if they checked every, you know, dodgy forward pass? No, well, that's what, well, that's what I mean. If the linesmen there and actually take their glasses off or put the spectacles on, we could stop going to the bunker as much. And they need to just grow a pair and, mm. and make some calls. Because one will stop the, oh, let's check it. Nah, mate, that was forward. And I don't get they're going to get some wrong. But if they're going to make these yeah. calls, I'm prepared for them to get some wrong. Mm. Because they're just... I'm, I just can't get past 
Well, once again, Parramatta were too good for the Cowboys, and that forward pass, you know, probably didn't decide the game. People say, yeah, it did, but, you know, the Cowboys are up by whatever, I, yeah. and, and they got ran down. Eight, I think, yeah. But, but my point is, that ref, that linesman, was right on top of it. You should not have missed that. No. I'm happy for the bunker to check forward passes if there's a try involved. Mm. If yes. it's in the middle of set, then don't worry about it. But that's the thing. He can sit there and he can award the try while the bunker's reviewing it. So as he's going back yep. to set up to kick the ball, he's yep. got enough time to review it and he'll go, all right, no, actually, that's fine, let it go. That nothing yep. has to even stop. He doesn't even have to go. It's getting reviewed boop, 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 and stop time. Yeah. Because yep. also, we'll get to that a little bit more in a minute, but every single try of Penrith's got reviewed. South never. Especially the Richard Kenner one. I reckon his arm was on the on the sideline before. That's right. But it yeah. didn't show from that other angle. It just went bang, gone. Yeah. But then, we'll get into more of this too, because I'll tell you what, this has really peed me off this way. How they can adjudicate that Stephen Crichton did not get that ball down. Stevie Wonder rang me last week. He said, I've seen that. He got it down. <laughs> so how did these bunkers... I'm not, I'm not saying that people are cheating or whatever, but you've got to ask yourself, it doesn't look good, does it? You know, like to disallow all these tries that are clear tries, you think... Is this bloke's team that team? It just you just can't justify how they come up with these rootings. But anyway, back to the Eels game. Another one for Smitter's mailbag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the Eels, um, classy team, and they showed showed it, um, you know, up there in some uh, rather warm conditions. Mm. Attendance was twenty five thousand three hundred and seventy two. Yeah, we get that at a training run. Yeah, but no, it was a good crowd. But what, what's their capacity up there? It would have to be close to that, wouldn't Not it? Not much more than that. No, it'd be pretty close, yeah. Around mm. about that. Maybe 30. I don't know. So. You've been there, haven't you, Scotty? So what was that? You've been to the Cowboys ground. Me? No. Huh. It's different, no, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> I've only been to Australia once, and that was 10 games. Mm. Um, I just went to Sydney and Gold Coast. Okay, but um, yeah. yeah, some some. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a Broncos fan that's never been to Brisbane. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But uh, yeah, some really good football from the Eels. Um, cool. I mean, they what, what got what got scratching my head is Jason Tamalolo. He got sent to the bin, but the Eels didn't get a penalty from it. Yes. So if he gets sent to the sim bin, so it's obviously for a disciplinary reason, which results yep. in a penalty. So why should he have got sent to the sim bin if it wasn't a, an issue? Oh, they said, oh, the play went too far forward. No, it didn't. Because they can bring it play was, back as far as they want. Yeah. So I found that rather interesting. And then he ends up getting, yeah. uh, what was it, three weeks? Uh, yeah, three yeah. weeks. Three. But so, obviously, it was a big deal. So, yeah. So, um, I mean, if you're going to get three weeks suspension, obviously it warranted a penalty. Mm. So, once again, that was obviously the bunker that intervened on that? Yeah, it was because, yeah, it did a few days later. So, I but, mean, it, yeah, go back. Go back. Nothing happened in, that, in those couple of plays, so... I mean, it was yeah, that took penalty. Yeah. was high, and we all you know accept that. But I mean, if the bunkers going to intervene on things like that, they've got to intervene on results. To, because at the end of the day, you're robbing the fans. And yep. I mean, it's the Cowboys fans. I feel sorry for there. Um, but also on the uh, the charges from the weekend while we're on it, Villiamu kick out uh, three thousand dollar fine. Yep. Yeah, yeah he gets the play. A. Eh? Yeah, I don't think there was much in it. Yeah. No. I mean, it was a second offence for a shoulder charge this year, so it's obviously um, in ensuring that he's got a, an extra extra fine. But I don't think it was much in this one. No, nah, and I mean, if Billy Slater got off to play the grand final for kicking, well, 
you can't really suspend him for that. No. I think they're trying to be a bit more lenient around finals times. Mm. Well, Junior Paulo. Yeah, that tackle was a bit iffy. Uh, but if, just say the Cowboys made it. Does Tom Alolo don't get suspended? Well, I mean, Tane Mill, like it was a, it what? was, it was a pretty nasty hit, like on Spencer <laughs> right across the choppers. But six matches. Yeah. How did he not break his arm? Yeah. <laughs> but six yeah. matches. Do you think it warrants six matches? Because I mean, yeah, it was nasty, but there was no rule. He didn't go out there to hit him across the face. Were you watching the same game? Yeah, he went out there to hit the He's, ball for He it. intentionally swung his arm. Yeah, to, to hit the ball loose. The ball. I mean... Do you I, carry he, the ball with your head? Yeah, it was just a tackle <laughs> going wrong. I'm happy for three to four weeks. Six weeks is a long I time. I thought six weeks is... Yeah. And I, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I disagree. I think he deserved what he got. Mm, I felt a bit sorry for him going off too because... He's just in his mind probably cost him the game. He's going to get six matches, and then he's got Spencer trying to take his head off all the way up to the tunnel and <laughs> so, the car park yeah, afterwards. Yeah. So um, yeah, we'll get into that a bit later. But yeah, <laughs> poor bugger. <laughs> what? <laughs> and, what happened to um, uh, Val Holmes? Like I, he, I reckon he was one of the. Cowboys' best player of the season. He didn't really show up. Nah, yeah, he had a quiet yeah. one, but just yeah. just quickly that, on, on the that's uh, another. I reckon that's what could have um, cost the Cowboys as well. Mm. Yeah, true, because he is a you know big game player and really needs yeah. to stand up. But Charlie Staines also um, grade one shoulder charge got uh, two thousand dollar fine. Was that for his hit on one of the? South players that put him on his backside? I don't know, but I don't think Charlie Staines would hurt a fly. I was going to say, they should be paying him <laughs> two grand for that. <laughs> Did you see the head he put on? I was on. I'm Charlie Staines? Yeah. I, I can't remember that one. Oh, I did. I was in stitches. I can't either. Because yeah. I, I was watching the game. It was like, like David and Goliath. And I just couldn't believe my eyes that I'd seen Charlie's. Remember Moses Leota's hit in the first half? Oh, we, how good was that? That's what it was like. But I just looked, I rubbed my eyes. You know in the cartoons you see them rubbing their eyes because they can't believe what they're seeing? And I've just seen this bloke on his backside and his little Charlie Staines. I just thought, yeah, you just don't expect that. You know what I mean? That was I mean, good on him. Good on him. Hopefully he can do it to Mike Asubo this week because I think he's got a big task ahead of him. No, I think Toto's going to be on that side. Oh, well, right he's still on. got a big task. <laughs> yeah, but Toto's shown he's a bumper. Well, Good night. Um, anyway, so, yeah, we, <laughs> we might move on to the second game of the uh, last week's was the mighty Penrith Pan. I'll let you do this one, actually. What? No, it's Scotty. No, get you on. You watched that game, did you, Scotty? Sorry, what was that? The Penrith and South game? Yeah, yeah, I watched that. How good was that? Uh, well, good for the second half of the Pan. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I thought uh, we were going to get South. Yeah, South started started all right. Um, and it was just a totally different Penrith team than, than what we used to in that first half. Mm, they but, can't do that. On um, the thing is, uh, but the turning the turning point in that game was Appy mm, when he scored that try. Yes. Yes. Uh, everything good. just changed for them. How yeah. seriously? It has if you pick five un, most underrated players in the comp, he's got to be in the top five. He's going to be a massive yep. loss for Penrith. Huge loss. But also, I also think, too, um, Tuttle um, played his best game of the season last week. And, you know, that's a must be a pretty... That was a good bump, eh? Hey? <laughs> <laughs> mm. 10-pin bowling. Uh, but to be yeah. honest, like, it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Mm. Like, oh, 100%. <laughs> and I think that... Would have rattled Cody Walker that badly. Put it probably put him off for the rest of his game. That's how you get. That's how you beat South. Is you get and you rattle Cody and you rattle Latrell. You're halfway to winning already. So, um, so what the that I had in that game was a um, a field goal, successful field goal in the match. So, but just before Toe's try. It was what twelve six at the time, less than a minute till half time, and they had the ball at halfway, like 
starting their set on halfway. Perfect opportunity mm. to spot a field go, goal, go seven points ahead at half time. And Couldn't I was like, yes, game. it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And they started running it. And <laughs> I was like, lost opportunity. Mm. So if that was uh, the other way around, Penrith up by six and they had the ball, Cleary would have gone for that. 100%. Point, three pointer. Yeah. See, the, the thing is, apparently uh, the coach was yelling on out. Phil goal and some were and some were so oh, okay. I think there was a little bit of miscommunication as well. But I mean, yeah. if that pass sticks, you know, the South might score and probably run away the game. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it's just yeah. Um, but it just shows you cannot lay down with Penrith. You give them a sniff and they'll take every inch and more. Mm. Um, they didn't drop their heads. That's the biggest thing. The timing was a little bit off in that first half. Obviously, they've had the week off, and some of them have had, a, you know, probably one game in the last month or two. Mm. So, you know, they're obviously quite fresh, and you know, I think they'll be, you know, they won't be sore by the come Sunday. That's for sure. They'll be ready to go. Well, I tell you what, they've brought in. I'm not a big fan of this. For I feel sorry for the players that have done all the hard yards over the last few weeks. And now Brad Arthur decides to bring, uh, what's his name? Brown. Brown in. So you've got to feel for the blokes that have been there and done it all these weeks and it comes time for the big dance and they go, oh, off you go, we bring him in. I haven't seen the team line up yet. Did his son make it? Uh, yeah, he's on, on the, the bench. bench. He's on the bench, right. Um, so, yeah, that to me, I think he's going to play tactics of trying to let Brown ruffle up Penrith. But... I'd say Moses would put his hand up and say, let's go. Or Spencer. So, But I think they maybe looked at it too, where Penrith, Viliamu plays a bit rough. Maybe they need a bit of that with Brown and uh, Madison and Papaliti to, to match it. So might be a little bit of fireworks. So that'll be interesting. Is he there? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You haven't fallen asleep, Sorry, Scotty, have you? <laughs> nah, not yet. <laughs> but yeah, so I was I was thinking with that Spencer Lenu, is that his name? Mm-hmm. Spencer Lenu yep. try. Um, Clary put the grubber in, and the trail took him out. It was a good like five seconds after he kicked it, and they scored the try, but there was no sin bin. Yes, I reckon that that rule should be reviewed. Because that was just that it was such a big gap he could have easily pulled out. Mm. But do you notice Penrith don't put their arms up and try and try and claim a penalty yeah. or, or whinge too yeah. much? Unlike Parramatta, sorry Gary, I wasn't going to say it. But um, Gutho's bad for it. But that's my whole point too. Is yeah, was it Spencer that scored the try? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Spencer scored the try. But um, Latrell didn't interfere with him. He interfered with Cleary. And clear as day, like you said, could have pulled out. It was the most blatant yep. professional foul there was. Yeah, we scored already. Penrith did. Excuse me. But I still think they should be introduced maybe the five in the bin even. But you get the yep. try and he goes off for five. Because it's still a professional foul. And yeah, I think it's just a... A, a part of the game probably we need stamping out a bit more. So make him think about it twice, wouldn't it? You get the try yep. and the... Um, but also they're looking at scrapping or, uh, the Friday night 6pm games next year. Mm. Good. So I applaud that. I think it was great because you work, how do you get to a 6pm Friday night game? Unless you sit at home. I love it, I love it over here because it's 8 o'clock for us. <laughs> yeah, true. But I mean, yeah. if you're over here, it and you, should be the it should be scrap the eight o'clock game and have have the six o'clock game. <laughs> but if if you if you don't work and you sit at home and do nothing, yeah, it suits them fine. But the ones yeah. that actually work and you know have families, yeah, we can't get to it. Well, so, so does that mean they're going to put one, one game on a Friday night now next year? Are they? No. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry. One on Friday night, and it'll be an extra game on Saturday. Okay. But even if you um, you work and you're coming home to watch it, you've got to sort your kids out, get home, organise mm. dinner, yeah. 
do everything and, and try and be on the lounge by 6 o'clock to watch footy. Yeah, that's right. It's near impossible. I mean, especially like, you know, Kylie works till 5 o'clock. By the time she gets home, it's nearly 6 o'clock. Mm. By the time I get home, have a shower and get, you know, because you're dirty, you're missing that some of the game. Mm. So it's got to go back to, they want, it's a business, they want bums on seats, but it's 7.30 at least. Mm. You know, and you can get there. Or, you know... Why not? Why not try and have majority of the Warriors games that are played in New Zealand at uh, 8 o'clock our time? Because that'll work for you guys, wouldn't it? 6 o'clock on a Friday. Yeah, but then they go, oh, you'll get people go, well, how come the Warriors get all Friday night games? You know, you'll... There's always someone that whinges about something. That's right. But I, I like the idea of more Saturday night games. Um, I get you got to have some Friday, some Sunday, but the, if you have more Saturday night, it's more family orientated and, and suitable for families. Yeah, you know, because people got to work Sunday too, and you got kids and minions to put to bed, and <laughs> but yeah, no, it's a it's a, it's a good idea. But uh, moving forward, mate, to the uh, the big one on the weekend. That what? Oh no, the Parramatta and. No, I was talking about the whole whole weekend. Oh, the grand final. Yeah, the how big... many how many games are there? Three. Uh yeah, I believe so. Is there a state game as well? Yes, I believe so. So who's that between? Is that Maitland? Um, they no, they won the other one, the yeah. Presidents Cup. Yeah. Um. So I, I believe. It's... Oh, it's North Devils versus Penrith. Okay. Yeah. So North Devils are they from Queensland? Queensland, yeah. yeah. So it's the best of the Queensland Cup. Play yeah. the winner of the New South Wales Cup. Yeah, so it's pretty much reserve grade versus Queensland reserve grade, so to speak. So, so I was watching a bit of a game on Sunday. I think it was versus uh, Penrith versus Newcastle. Mm-hmm. Is it? But it was one of the Penrith teams that won. Um, on Sunday, so there was Jersey there was flag, like yeah. three of them. Yeah, okay. So, um, was that the um, the game that was went into extra time? Yes. Okay, so was, yeah, that was against um, Newcastle, eh? That's yeah. right. And Newcastle, it was only a seven. It was only meant to be a seventy minute game. Yeah, Newcastle what led. Eight, that? Newcastle led eighteen six with eight minutes to go, and um, it was eighteen all at full time. And then yeah. obviously Penrith scored in. Well, Penrith kicked a field goal in Golden Point. Yeah, so the guy that kicked the field goal, he's off to um, um, the Dolphins next year. Oh right, oh Sullivan is that yeah. Sullivan? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, it was Sean wasn't it? Sullivan? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no oh, not the, Sullivan. Um, uh, Katoa? Oh, yeah, it is too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Katoa. Mm. Yeah, fair enough. And their fullback did a, a mean mean run um, just before that field goal happened as well. Oh, huge run. He, The Penrith team can um, all buy him a beer. If he doesn't do that run, they don't kick the field goal, they don't win. Yeah, yeah. So that was an insp- honestly uh, inspirational. He he w- got them over the line with that run. Like he just yeah. threw players off like nothing else. Yeah, like, it was it was so good. You, is it what is he like? Is it NRL standard or is it just bad tackling? <laughs> oh, I could have come down to a bit of exhaustion and bad tackling yeah. as well. So, um, but uh, the Knights thirty over the Dragons six in the NRLW put the night straight through to the grand final for the first time ever. And, uh, mm. yeah, it was quite a good game. Did you catch that one? Nah, I didn't watch any of the girls this weekend. I just uh, just sort of flicking through um, updates on my phone yeah, while no, they were on. It was a, um, I caught the highlights because I was in the dentist at the time. <laughs> um, oh, okay. No, I kid you not, it's still... Um, Looks like Kylie bashed me. Um, Don't tell me. But, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I watched the highlights and a uh, bit of it when we got home. And, um, yeah, that Tamika Upton, she's going to be, she plays well. I'll, I'd say we win on the weekend. 
Um, yep. She's like, to me, she's a Kalen Ponga on the women's football. I think she's just, the ball skills is, you know, unreal. Um, there was Elsie Albert for, for the uh, Dragons had a good game too, actually. So did Emma Tonegato. Yeah. She had 240 run metres. And um, she was the only probably dragon that probably tried to threaten the Knights, but um, their defence was too good on the line. And every time they repel dragon scoring, the Knights went down the other end and scored. So, mm. um, yeah, they're too good. Too good. So Yeah, so uh, I uh, thought it was quite a uh, – probably their best performance of the year. Um, did, you, did you see how Tamika Upton's career um, came about? How her um, how, when she was playing for the Broncos? No, Scotty. Nah. She got a late when she was twenty five. She got a late call up for the Broncos in two thousand and nineteen. There was a decider, and after just two games on the wing with the former coach Kelvin Wright, um, opting for Upton over regular fullback Chelsea Baker on game day. It was a bold selection. Yeah. Um, it come down to form with Upton's first match in the number one jersey coming up trumps. The Broncos thumped the Dragons 30 to 6. And yeah, she, I can understand why. But, but you see that game on the weekend, that was a difference. She made a huge difference. Scored two tries. Unreal player, to be honest. Um, I know it's a big call, but I'd probably go as far as saying she's probably. Top five best in the comp. She might get the medal this mm. week. That's what I mean. She mm. might, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Mm. Playing for the night, she's saying that this is the most I've enjoyed my footy in a long time. Well, that's that's good for from a club point of view because it looks like she'll stay. Mm. Um, and, you know, while you, you all know, while you're enjoying your footy, they're not going to go anywhere. Mm, happy team's a good team, isn't it? So. Yeah. So um, that's mm. a good. And saying that too. I believe Millie Boyle and her are really good friends, so that could us. Well, no, I'd say Adam Elliott keeps her here, but um, yeah, if we can keep a nucleus of the team together, it's a it's a, a good step for us. But you got, you got to feel for the Dragons too. Elsie Albert, that never stopped trying. I, I'm a fan of hers. I think she's a machine. Are you there, Scotty? Yep, yep. Oh, we've seen the last. Yeah, I'm listening. And. Um, <laughs> So yeah, the uh, so the Knights are straight through to the grand final, and then uh, Parramatta on the Sunday um, surprised everyone and beat the Dragons. So the Roosters, yeah. uh, Roosters sorry. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, they're free. yeah. It, it annoyed me a little bit because uh, there's a tipping comp that I'm still in um, on the NRL page, and that was the only boss I picked over the weekend. Yeah, well, I'd say a lot of people would have done that, but um, I did yeah. say last week I reckon the Dragons could do them, didn't I? I'm pretty sure. Mm. Oh, the Eels? No, I don't know. I can't remember. Oh. Yeah. We'll have to go through it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but did, this um, game does actually worry me in a way. Um, last season, the Roosters come from the clouds to make fourth spot, and they knocked over Brisbane in the first round of the semis and they won the grand final. Parramatta are doing the same thing. Mm. They come from the clouds. They finished in fourth spot. They beat the minor pr- the, the premiers, and now they're obviously yeah. in the grand final. So, <coughs> you know, so that, as you said, as Dino said before, it's, you know, on your day. So, um, mm. but yeah, it'll be a good game. Looking forward to it. Uh, myself and the crazy lady will be there to watch them all, and... Um, yeah, some entertainment on on the weekend too, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yep, Jimmy Barnes. Barnes is playing, eh? Yes, mm. yes. As long as he plays or performs, I should say, the best. Simply the best. Mm. They can't have him at the grand final and not play that song. I'd rather Tina Turner yeah. sing it. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, he Tina Turner, unfortunately, is probably never to come back. Um. But yeah, you won't. Nah, she's she's um she's officially retired, eh? She said. Hmm. And good honour, you know. She served a, you know a lot of years, but Barnes, he, he's got to do the best. If not, you feel I feel it will be dudded a performance. I mean, we all know he's so probably going to sing K. Sand, but is that is that 
Oh, I'm not sure. There's a few. Um, I've only really heard of him and um, the De- daughter. Diesel. And Diesel, yeah. Which, uh, yeah, Diesel's brother owns Lizette's in Newcastle. Lizette's. Lizette's. Lizette's, same thing, different mother. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so the entertainment should be good. So me and the uh, crazy lady will be there, so we might even do some uh, live feeds or some videos and get a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of uh, feedback and give us all a little mm. inkling into it. But uh, how many thousand they say? 80,000, was it? I think that's what the capacity, isn't it? Mm. So it's going to be uh, pretty bumper to bumper. But while we're on this subject, oh, I'll say it, I'll leave it to later so I don't get too steamed off. But it's another thing that's really steamed me off. It's got to do with tickets. But, mate, uh, so who you, who you got for the weekend? Who's uh, Who's your picks? Uh, me, are you talking to me? Yep. Um, I am... I'm going to pick the Eels. In all, both grades? In both, uh, yep, in both games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You cut me out, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eels men's, Eels women's, and North for... Uh, the Queensland Cup team, I guess, to beat uh, Penrith. So we're going to have a profile pick bet on this? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so reason reason is um, I'm sitting tenth in the in the tipping comp I was just talking about, mm. and top eight win prizes. So I have to, so you need to come do up. some upsets. I yeah. think upsets to go your way. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, we'll talk to you same time next week and let you get off to bed. It's, uh, I do believe that you're three hours in front of us at the moment now over there. Yeah, it's nearly one, one o'clock in the morning here. Oh, what? Seriously? No, I'm, just, I'm, jo- I'm joking. It's 10 to 11. 10 to 11 over there. I'd swear, but I'd get in trouble. <laughs> well, Scotty's got to get his beauty sleep. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, a bit late like for that. that. <laughs> 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 oh, <a> <coughs> All right, champion, mate. Uh, yeah, we look forward to chatting to you again next week and uh, go the Knights yeah. and go the Panthers. Yep, the last show next week, is it? Yeah, mate. Uh, yeah, lucky last of the year and uh, yeah, right. we'll catch you then. All good. And you guys have uh, amazing uh, time on Sunday. Hmm. Yeah, no, it should be good, so uh, looking forward to it. I'll um, try and spot you in the crowd. Yeah, good luck. Where's Wally? <laughs> it should, shouldn't be too hard, shouldn't it? Oh, yeah, Dean sticks out like a sore thumb, but all Just right. Someone, someone wearing a Knights jersey and a Panthers jersey next to each other, shouldn't be too hard, <laughs> is it? Yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> we should, we, if we had a banner or something we could take, or, oh, I don't yeah. know have, but anyway, so, mate... Sorry? Dan, I think you should um, go for a streak. Uh, five minutes of five minutes for full time of Panthers losing, losing. You just want to get your rocks off. Losing? No. Can you hang up? Hang up. <laughs> I reckon you should put a sign up with the nighttime podcast. That'll that'll get that'll get us. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit too big will. to take, but but um. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll see what we can do and see if we can yeah sort something out. But uh, we'll talk to you next week and. It's, Time we took a break and we'll be back shortly.
Ladies and welcome back. And tonight it's uh, a great pleasure to have one of our uh, special guests on the line. As you've seen the uh, the video that you just might have seen, then I think you all know who it is. But uh, welcome to the show, Jesse. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Hello. Hello. No, mate, pleasure. And um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, oh, well, unfortunately for us, not not with us no more. But uh, exciting times ahead for you and the uh, the family over in England. Yeah, mate. Um, lucky enough to uh, pick up a deal there to head to whole KR for the next three seasons. Um, so pretty grateful for that. But yeah, really sad to to be leaving the night. It's been um, a really good club for me the last couple of years, and. Um, I think they're in, in the good good space at the moment with the leaders they have. So um, I wouldn't be um, wouldn't be too sh- um, yeah too shocked if I was uh, the fans. Yeah, no, mate. Uh, yeah, it was just sad to see you go. But um, what was it like running out for the Knights um, at a packed McDonald Jones Stadium, mate? For for Jesse, what what was that feeling like? It was actually unreal. Um, it was probably one of the best grounds best um, crowds at a ground that I've been to um, being a, 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 a Tigers junior running out of the Leichhardt um, yeah it's crazy it's electrifying like Leichhardt but um, it's like way more the capacity of the um, crowd there is crazy I feel like I was running out of final footy every time um, I ran out um, at a packed stadium but um, yeah um, I'm going to miss Newcastle um, Newcastle and McDonald Jones um, stadium um but, yeah, really grateful for the memories that I do have um, of this uh, great club. The uh, big fella to my right is going to miss you dearly. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. Mate, we will, mate. Um, but we'll follow you over in uh, you, over in uh, England anyway. But um, it is sad to see you go. You know, you've become a, a favourite of our family. So, uh, but yeah, we'll follow you on through over there. But... Uh, who who would, you, who would you regard as your toughest opponent that you've ever had? Um, toughest opponent? Um, probably Hargrave. He's always um, trying to be the aggressor and stuff, but um, yeah, probably Hargrave. I'll tell you what, I've seen some footage the other day when you were playing with uh, the Bulldogs. And yeah. I, it must have been our first year we had Clem. And that shot you put on Clemmer. Oh, yeah. Um, I thought, I just remember because you guys just beat us there at the last minute. Um, yeah, so I remember that game pretty fondly. <laughs> I tell you what, not many people put a shot on Clemmer like that. But I tell you what, yeah, I'd say Clem would have felt that. And mm. when he realised you were signing with us um, back then two years ago, he's probably a bit of a sigh of relief. Yeah, no, nah, it was actually, um, I actually signed with Bulldogs um, thinking that I was going to um, play with Clem earlier than I actually did. Um, when he did leave, like, um, late in that season there, so I was pretty gutted that I didn't end up playing with my Bulldogs, but then, yeah, lucky enough, I got the chance to come to Newcastle and play with him. Jesse, um, I've got a couple of questions, actually, mate. I've done a little bit of research on you. Um, mate, you played 172 first-grade NRL games. I just wanted to know, in that time, what was your favourite memory? Um, favourite memory? Uh, there's quite a few. I guess my debuts for each club were up there. Um, playing my 100th and the 150th. 150th for the match is always pretty memorable, but... Um, I think my most memorable match is um, my debut for Samoa. Mm. Same match. I've seen that. Sorry, mate. Yeah, against New Zealand there in the UK it was pretty pretty special. Seen the uh, Samoan team come out today. Pretty strong team, but uh, yeah, thought you could have got a run in it. Uh, yeah, um, I'm yeah, I'm pretty ex- excited. Pretty excited for the team and um, the experience they're going to have in the UK. And um, yeah. I feel like they're going to do something special this year, but um, yeah, I feel like they're in good hands. Um, I feel like my season this this year wasn't my best, so I'm not really too bummed that I didn't make the squad. So um, yeah, I'm just happy, and um, yeah, I feel like they're in a good spot um, at the moment. So hopefully they do us us proud. Do they have you on standby if someone gets injured or anything like that? Uh yeah, I guess so. If someone does get injured, I'll. 
Um, I'll see what happens. But um, I think my biggest focus at the moment is just getting over with the family together um, to hold and setting up for the next couple of years. Because if I go, if I, I think if I go World Cup, I won't be able to um, go together with them. And my wife and three kids, I don't think that's a good, um, <laughs> not, not a good part of me. Yeah, no, you just had a, another little one not too long ago, so... Yeah, yeah. it'll be a bit hard for the missus with the three kids, but... Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, but, mate, honestly, I thought, you know, a bit hard on yourself saying it wasn't your best season. I thought you every game you played, you always put in 110% effort and, you know, always played with heart. So, uh, yeah, I thought you played quite well this year, but I could be a bit biased. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, I was just thinking about uh, playing a lot of games in um, reserve grade. This year compared to playing an arrow, so uh, it is what it is. But a lot of lessons learned this year, and um, yeah. I'll tell you what: when you go over the Super League, mate, how are you going to stop the juggernaut of St Helens four in a row? Yeah, that's crazy. First time in history, um, I simply team has done that. But um, yeah, I'm just excited to go over and um, bond with my teammates, my new teammates, and mm. um, connect and get some combinations going and hitting the ground running in 2023. And I suppose you can't wait for the derby as well. Yeah, the whole derby. Yeah. I'm sure you've heard a lot about it. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a lot about it and, as well. And um, it'll be good I bet coming up against Tex there. Um, I, Tex will, do a, will be a freak over there, um, mm-hmm. the way he plays. So I'm excited to see how he goes as well. Mm, he certainly played um, well too. You certainly played well towards the back end of the season, didn't he, in the couple of games he played at fullback there? Yeah, 100%. Uh, he's still young, still learning. So the more you pump up the tyres, give him a little confidence, the more he's going to learn and back himself. And he's really skillful already. So he just backs himself to a, to a kill it. Mate, what's the plans after footy for, for Jesse Sue? What's the, what's your plan to... Uh, retirement, which is a fair way down the track, but you know, you got any plans um, for that? Um, I know um, the wife and myself really like Newcastle, so I think when we, when we come back from um, the UK, we'll probably migrate back to Newcastle and um, yeah, bring up the kids here in Newcastle a lot, um, yeah, a lot better than it is in Sydney, so in some sense, but um, yeah, we'll be back in Newcastle when I retire, so. I'll see you guys around then. It sounds like there might be a seat for you on the uh, nighttime podcast when you come back. <laughs> oh, I won't say no, mate. Ah, <laughs> uh, mate. Um, yeah. So, what actually attracted you to when you first were signed in Newcastle? What was the big factor t- to bring bring you up to Newcastle? Um, at, at the time, um, compared to the other clubs that I um, that I had on offer, was um, Newcastle was probably the best. Um, I really wanted to play finals, and um, yeah, it was the best team that I, yeah, that I suited, suited, and um, yeah, and the best team to make finals, um, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, I got the chance. Um, I got the chance to play finals last year, but I'm real gutted how this season went, and um, yeah, a lot of lessons learned for the club and um, myself, and yeah, the club's in good hands, and. Um, I'm sure they'll bounce back next year as well for the commitment the boys are putting in, especially <coughs> in, um, on the pulling out of the World Cup squad. So that just shows how much they're going to they're taking this seriously. And, um, yeah, I can't wait to see what um, Newcastle will do next year. Well, mate, I'll tell you what, I spoke to a few um, of the players and, you know, mentioned that you were coming on and that. And um, there was quite a few of them that said that they're going to miss you that, uh, you know, they had a lot of respect for you and it's not going to be the same without you. So not just did you, you know, um, you know, have it with the fans, but all your players around you respected you as well. So that's a, you know, that's a big thing, I feel. Mm. Um, got another question for you, mate. Um, we're going to pick your brain here. Um, do you remember when you scored your first NRL <coughs> try and who was it against? Um, I think it was against uh, the Broncos. Um, late in 2013. That is oh. correct. That yeah. is correct. I've, I've, as I said, I've done a little bit of research on you today. So, uh, 
Yeah, I had to come up with a few questions. So, um, yeah, so you've um, you've, you've done well. <laughs> Thanks, mate. No problem. Mate, we've got the wife sitting next to us, and she's obviously the big Penrith fan. So she's a big Spencer Lino fan too. So Lenu, uh, Lenu so same thing. Played uh, in the... yeah, yeah. Big Spencer. Yeah, you played with him in with the uh, Samoan team? Uh, no, I haven't actually. But, um, yeah, I've seen him around um, – a few times, he's a big boy actually, and um, he's real humble off the field, which is good. And I like to see his aggression on the field as well. So, mm. yeah, he's got a big future ahead of himself. Um, he just keeps projecting what, how he's going, and yeah, he's in the side more squad as well. So, be, um, yeah, watching him closely in the World Cup as well. Um, yeah, good kid. Yeah, no, it's uh, good to see. And mate, a couple more questions before we go. We won't hold you up too much. But who's your pick for the grand final in both both the women's and the men's? Uh women, obviously Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, they're such a good squad at the moment. And um, compared to how they played um, last season, it's just it's crazy how much they've grown in a couple of months. Um, and um, yeah. In the NRL, sorry, Parramatta. Oh. <laughs> I think I think we've lost that. <laughs> That's just rude. <laughs> Parramatta, so. Uh, yeah. Anyway, hey, you never. Know. I'll tell you what, they've been playing some good football too, and um, it will be a great game. Um, yeah, it'll be a perfect game. But mate, once again, um, from behalf of all of us here. And all the other Knights fans, we thank you for the memories you give us as a Knight. And, um, yeah, I'm sure we'll, we'll cross paths again and keep in touch and follow you over in uh, England. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for having me on. And I um, appreciate um, all your guys' support for the last um, two years. And, um, yeah, looking forward to what the future holds for all of us. Yeah. Have a safe trip over there, mate. And, um, yeah, hope everything goes well for you. Thank you. No, Take too- care. Too easy, Jess. We'll be in touch. We'll keep in touch anyway, mate, and follow your your progress over there. But all right, guys, we might take a short break and be back shortly. <laughs> Too easy, champion. Thanks, heaps, eh? Hey? Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> no, nah, pleasure, mate. We uh yeah, pleasure to have you on and uh yeah, take care over there, but I'll keep in contact with you anyway and um yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks champion. No worries, mate. Take care, yeah. I'll get you some vodka down to you soon, do. Oh, good. All good. <laughs> Thanks, champion. All the best, pal. All right, guys, and uh, welcome back. And. Next week, we're going to give away our Sayers Inc. $500 tattoo voucher. So what we've come up with, we're going to just, you know, do whoever picks the score, you know, wins it. But nobody might win it. M- nobody might pick the winner in the score. So what we're going to do is pick the winner in the score. If you get it, you go on to the chocolate world. If you don't get it and you're pretty close... We're going to find 25 people that are close. It can be either Penrith, Parramatta, Knights and Parramatta, women's game. Out of any of those two, if you don't get it but you're close, we're going to pick 25 random people to go on our chocolate wheel. And then next week, we're, the crazy lady's going to spin it. And whoever it lands on is going to win the five. You know, if that's your number, we'll have all the names run to 25 in a, in a sheet there so you can see it on camera. And whoever wins that will get the uh, the voucher. And we might also have, uh, when well, we said we had loads of giveaways for tonight, we're going to push them to next week. So everyone that goes on that chocolate wheel will have a chance of winning something. So we might have 25 spins next week to uh, see who wins some prizes. So we'll uh, hopefully, use, you know, can I win number one? No. No. Oh, damn. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, get on there. Um, That'll be up on uh, Sunday on the game, you know, for the game to pick who you think is going to win, pick the score. Um, If there's no actual winners of, you know, whoever's closest, we'll 
we'll pick 25 winners to get on there. So uh, get in and see what you can get and win. But uh, t- that time of night again, is it? For a bit of humour for the crazy ladies' jokes. Mm-hmm. What do you got for us? Ha! 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 Three English men were walking through a desert. They were tired and thirsty, but most of all hungry. Soon they came across a nomad with about two camels, one alive and one very much dead. The nomad said, hey there, you guys look hungry. The three men all nodded. I tell you what, I was about to start eating this camel. I'll share it with you. The three men soon started arguing about who gets what when one of them chimes in with, all right guys, how about this? Whatever football team we support dictates what part of the camel we can have. So he goes, well, I support Liverpool, so... He got the liver. I support Hartlepool, said the second man. So he got the heart. The last guy said, I support Arsenal, but I'm not hungry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, that was a good one. That was sent in by me, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Bit unfortunate there for those Gunners fans. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a bit of a short one. I thought I'd surprise my girlfriend for her birthday. Her. What are you doing? And why are you shirtless? Me. Smiles and nods. Her. And you're covered in baby oil? Me. Well, you know how you always say I never glisten? Her. Listen. You never listen. Oh. Me. That wasn't funny. <laughs> uh, that was. It wasn't. The b- really? first one was better. Where's Jono to laugh at my dad jokes? Oh, he's laughing. Mm. I can hear him now. Mm. (laughs) This one's for you, Gary. Two elderly gentlemen, not that one, not not that part. (laughs) With a senior's ticket? (laughs) Who who had been without (laughs) intimate relations for several years, decided they needed to visit a cat house for some tail. When they arrived, the madam took one look at them and decided she wasn't going to waste any of her girls on these two old men. She used blow-up dolls instead. She put the dolls in each man's room and left them to their business. After the two men were finished, they started for home and got to talking. The first man said, I think the girl I had was dead. She never moved, talked or even groaned. How was it for you? The second man replied, I think mine was a witch. The first man asked, how's that? Well, said the second man, when I nibbled on her breast, she farted and flew out the window. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the for Gary. Is he got a doll? No, it's something he... It's a joke that oh, he would tell. Gotcha, gotcha. I should have elaborated before gotcha. I said, <laughs> said that. That's more true than anything. Anyway. And now for the grand finale. <laughs> okay. All right, one more. Hopefully I'll hit the nail on the head with this one. No, they're all good. They're all good. Stop lying. You just want to try and get in the good books. A young woman had been taking golf lessons. She had just started playing her first round of golf when she suffered a bee sting. Her pain was so intense that she could, she decided to return to the clubhouse for help and to complain. Her golf pro, Graham, saw her come into the clubhouse and asked, Why are you back in so early? What's wrong? I was stung by a bee, she said. Where, he asked. Between the first and the second hole, she replied. He nodded knowingly and said, Then your feet were too far apart. <laughs> I'd like to see what was happening on the 19th hole. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I like the. Uh, yeah, I like them. Yeah, they're all pretty good. Stop one. lying. I didn't mind them. Last one did it for me. The bee sting. Mm. Gary liked the doll. I liked the doll. That was funny. Mm. So, is that it? Minion? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I just. No one thought it was funny. No, we did. Stop yeah. lying. You got any more? Is that it? No, that's it. All right. Well, uh, so that's you for the week. Mm. And uh, good luck to the Panthers. Thanks. And mm. uh, your lovely husband's taking you down there. Good bloke, isn't he? Mm. Well, apparently not. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll uh, see you next week. Mm. All right. All right, guys, so uh, in previous matches and uh, sporting events, predictions have been made by who's going to win by octopuses, roosters, camels, spiders, 
and God knows what else. But here on the uh, podcast, we've decided we're going to have it decided by two of our illustrious members. And in the blue corner, we have Gary, the River Worm. And on the black corner, we have the ever so beautiful crazy lady. So it's going to be decided by a wrestle, a arm wrestle. So take your places. And then <laughs> my arm's too short. And go. <laughs> oh, a Penrith's up by one, and hang on, he comes back with uh, Paramount's fighting back. Oh, hang on, I think it's going to be decided as they draw. Ah, <laughs> uh, too hard to split, so I think it's going to be a draw. All right, guys, welcome back, and it's that time of night again. It's time for Trocking Schmidt. Trocking Schmidt. And uh, who we got on the line there? Call the number one. I'm Jesse. Hey, Jesse, mate. How you going, buddy? Good yourself. Yeah, good, mate. Uh, what's question you got for us this week, mate? Um, what do you think the margin will be and price of the Clive Churchill medal? Oh, knowing that you're a Panthers fan, mate, I'll have to uh, stick with you on that one and say I reckon Penrith by 12 and Dylan Edwards. Good position. Yeah, Dylan Edwards is obviously he's my favorite player. So, yeah, that's a real good choice. Hopefully. Um, yeah, if not, I'd say Cleary could get it. But... Um, I would also wouldn't mind throwing a smoke in there. Probably wouldn't get it, but I'm a big James Fisher Harris fan. Good on you. So uh, mm. even though he plays for the Panthers and not the Knights, but mate, uh, the rest of the boys. Oh, you, I was going to say Dylan Edwards, but I'll take an, I'll take an, uh, another one. I'll say Appy. Oh yes, that could be a smoky too. Uh, and Penrith probably by fourteen. Mm. Cool. Yeah, I reckon Penrith one to twelve. And I reckon you're Dylan Edwards or Brian Toppo. Brian Toppo, oh yeah. Oh yeah, Toppo. I mean, there's a few out there. Um, but if it, unfortunately, hopefully this doesn't go this way, but floor by Gary will be hoping it does. Um, yeah. If it does go Parramatta's way, I'd say you'd probably go Mitchell Moses. No. Um, yeah. But I'll, yeah, let's hope that, that doesn't happen. If it does happen, <laughs> if it does happen for Parramatta, I'd go Dylan Brown. Uh, if it does happen for Parramatta, I'm walking home. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, what about the uh, women's game? Uh, the Knights are in it with uh, Parramatta. I'm going with Newcastle and Millie Boyle or Tamika Upton as the women of the match. Yeah, I like your form, man. That sounds good. But I'll also... I fr- like... Sorry? I like... I like Jessie Southwell, though. She's an exceptional young player. Mm. Mate, she is for a seventeen-year-old too. She's got a bright future. Yeah, but I think you're on the ball there. Uh, our keys probably is Millie or Tamika Upton, but I'm going to throw in a Smokey there and um, Caitlin Johnson. She's, Caitlin uh, Johnson. She's a great player too. Yeah, I reckon the Knights women will beat Parramatta. Oh, that's what we like to see. Good on you, mate. But, uh, mm. mate, uh, enjoy the game on the weekend, and we'll hope to see you there and um, up the Panthers, eh? Yeah, thank you so much for putting me on the show tonight. I really appreciate it. Nah, no, anytime, yeah, mate. Sorry. Our pleasure. It's good to have fans like you that, uh, you know, loyal fans of the game, and, mate, you just enjoy it and soak it up, eh? Thanks, you're a legend. Thanks, Chair Ben. You two have a good night. See, See you, go buddy. Go to the Panthers and Knights. All right, guys, it's time for caller number two. Who we got there? Uh, you have uh, Henry Daunt, the Melbourne Storm supporter. Oh, the Storm supporter. Mate, uh, what do you got for us this week? Is it a grand final question or...? Uh, it is a grand final question. Uh, and, uh, and, it, and it is this. What do you think the final score will be on Sunday? Oh, we just had a similar one, but uh, yeah, we said I reckon Penrith by twelve. Um, yeah, so the general 
Gifford was around 12, 14 points. We're hoping Penrith get up by. Oh, okay. Well, my, my personal prediction is para, Parramatta 24, Penrith 18. Mm, could be. It, it's going to be a tight one. Yeah, well, you just got you just got the nod from our um, production producer here. He's just uh, give you the nod. He's a big Parramatta fan, so uh, yeah, we don't we, hold, hold that against him. Yeah, well, that's uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking it'll, it's, it's going to be one try. That's going to be the difference. What about the women's comp, mate? Uh, for some, you know, I've, I've got a feeling about Newcastle. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I've got a feeling about you know, I've, got, I've got a feeling the 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 Knights are going to are going to walk away with that one. Yeah, hopefully. But I mean, I think both games are going to be. Um, you probably couldn't have picked two better teams. To, I think they're both going to bring some exceptional football, mm. um, which is you know what you want. Here's why we got you on the line. What's your take um, on the whole ticketing debacle? Oh. Well, I think this is a uh, a situation where uh, where uh, incompetent management <laughs> needs to be held accountable. Yeah, I, we were talking earlier, and we think also it should go back to made illegal where you buy tickets and sell them for ridiculous amounts. Yeah, well, well, you know, unfortunately, every, it seems to be that with scalpers, every time, uh, every time someone tries to bring in a way to control the scalpers, the uh, they always seem to find a way around it. Yeah, there's just too many on yeah. Facebook. Like, you know, we bought tickets, uh, like four hundred each or something, and now they're going up to for two tickets, nearly two grand. Um, so, yeah, ridiculous. I mean. Not a bad investment if you're into that sort of thing, but yeah. I do just think uh, that when it comes to grand final tickets, I think, I think much more stringent management on the NRL's part needs to. I think the NRL needs to make a take a much stronger stand on managing the grand final tickets. Yeah, there's got to be something done. So yeah. you, you're uh, you might expect a couple of words from the crazy lady if the, the Panthers win. Uh, oh yes, uh, from the uh, the trouble and strike. I mean, I, I'm sorry, try, I'm sorry, Kylie. That was just that's just an old British expression. <laughs> just, uh, oh well, uh, it's just a well. I, the way I see it, I don't I don't like tipping grand finals. It's anyone's game. Anything can happen. Yeah, that's right. Oh, grand finals. Best, best example of that: the 1997 grand final. Hundred percent. No, it's no one nights. could have expected that to happen. Yeah, I will tell you what, that was probably the best game of my life. I've been to, but um, this is Kylie's first grand final she's ever been to, so uh, yeah, uh, it'll be something exciting for her to hear the atmosphere and just to go through, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, no, well, well certainly, but uh, yeah, no, but you know, like uh, the, way, uh, the way I say it, as far as this for this Sunday goes, it ain't over till the fat lady sings. Yeah, well, that's true. That is very true. Mate, uh, we appreciate your call once again and uh, also being a uh, a loyal listener listener to our show down there in Melbourne. So, um, yeah, much appreciated. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can bring another uh, good uh, program to you and another one next week before our final show. Oh, okay. Well, well, I look forward to hearing it. No worries, champion. Thanks very much for your call. See you, mate. Take- See you, mate. All right, guys, it's time for caller number three. Who we got there? Robbo from Doonside again, mate. Oh, Robbo, welcome back, mate. Uh, what do you got for us here? Big uh, big grand final question? Yeah, mate, grand final. Who you guys got for first try, your last try? You know, pretty much your betting options. Ooh. Tough one. The, sure man, the men's or the women's the cop? Uh, both, mate. Both. Okay, the men's I've got... Sebo or Sebo or whatever his name is. Yeah. I'm going to take him for first. And the last one I'm going to put on Nathan Cleary. Nathan Cleary. Yeah, he's going to do it all himself. Either chip or grubber and chase or he's going to run up the line and dummy and go over. But, yeah, I think uh, Parra will open the scoring. With Sebo, yeah. and yeah, then I think Cleary will, throughout the game, probably the last one will be his masterclass. Not sure if it will win the game with that try, but he will definitely score. Well, you pair cool. Mm. And the women? To make her up, then. 
I think she'll, she, yeah, scored two last week. Probably get another one now. Yeah, she's been my pick for the week. Mm. And you? I think Steve Crichton will get the first try. Ooh. And the last try, um, Papa Leakey from Parramatta. Hmm. And for the women's, I think for the first try, Caitlin Johnson. Oh, yeah. Muscle. And the last try for, for the women's, I think um, number seven, Jesse South. Well, yeah. Hmm. Pretty good uh, oh, the chances of all of them happening. Mm. Um, Jerome Lulwai, first try scorer. Well, he's been a bit quiet lately, I think, mm. Jerome. So he's probably due for a good game. Yep. And I'll just go with probably... Uh, I'm going to go, because I like Dylan Edwards, so I'm going to go him last try scorer. Mm. And the women. Um, I'm going to get a bit of a smoky, actually. Someone out there a bit different. Shanice Parker, first try scorer. Mm. Yeah. While we're talking about the women's, I must have a shout out to um you gotta feel sorry for his uh Autumn and Hannah Southwell. Hannah Southwell. Yeah. That Hannah won't Southwell. be there for on the weekend. Um it's a shame they couldn't just suit up and sit on the sideline, feel a part of it. But yeah, I mean they're a big part of it to getting the team there too, so wouldn't be surprised if one of the girls give them their rings. So <laughs> but yeah. Um what about yourself, mate? Um, I'm liking Dylan Edwards in the men's. I think I'm, I'm actually liking him for first and last. Don't Ooh. don't know why, but some Crazy reason I've feeling. Crazy lady would be liking that. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, yeah, I think that's got to be me bet. But yeah, I'm liking Dylan Edwards. Just just a work rate, mate. Got to eventually show out in the grand final. All right, I'll just throw and it out to you there quickly too. Who's your daily M? Daily M, mm. mate. I want to go him as a smoky, but. Mm. I, you can't go past Nathan Cleary. He just he does far too much. Or yeah, I'm going Edwards. He's set up play. He's day drop a kick or two. It's got to be on Nathan, by Nathan Cleary. So, mate, those bombs are got to test them out. I'm going Nathan Cleary. Clive Churchill. Oh, Clive talking. Churchill, you're yeah. thinking. Yeah. yeah, not Daly. Yeah, yeah, Clive, yeah Clive, Clive Churchill. Churchill. Go Clive Churchill, yeah. yeah. And the Daly yeah, M player of the year? Oh, I'm sorry, Daly M. Sorry, I just had grand final in my head, so I went quite... Um, Mate, yeah, I'm definitely Ben. I still can't go past Ben Hunt. I'm thinking he was far, he was ahead when it went behind closed doors. Mm. He would have scored. I know they didn't win many games, but he would have scored points in just, the games they won. I know he definitely got. And, I know he definitely got three in the last round against the Broncos. So that well, might, most point, that most games they win, the you'd assume he gets points. I just look at Edwards and just think he's been a powerhouse the whole year as well. So I reckon they'll throw it down between the pair of them. I still think Nico Hines. Nah. Yeah, down, 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 down at, at, at the start of the year, yep. Towards the end, mm. Mm, yeah, no, I don't think. But anyway, Tedesco, Next. Tedesco might squeeze in there too towards the, the back end. Unfortunately, I think he will, and he might take full back of the year off Edwards, but I don't mm. think he should. No, he definitely. No, I'm, think, I'm thinking Edwards will get full back, and Tedesco might get captain. Yeah, mm. possibly. Or if if Tedesco gets fullback, Edwards gets Clive Churchill in the in the grand final. Okay. Yeah. I, I throw, fair, yeah. throw it this way to you, Penrith win on the weekend, captain of the year, Isaiah Yo. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. He could get captain. He's the most underrated player. Yeah. So the daily M's. I thought the daily M's were done before the grand final. They are. They'll be done tomorrow night. Yeah, aren't they? Yeah, tonight. that's what I was thinking. It's they're, on, they're on tonight. Yeah, tonight. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. They're on tonight. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. Yeah, I mm. thought it was this week sometime. I wasn't sure on what night, but I was thinking they're always mm. done before the grand final. Yeah, so I for, it forgot they sort of takes the grand final out. Hmm. But, right. Well, there you yeah. go. All right, mate. Uh, are you heading down to the grand final at all? Uh, no, I'm, I just heading out for the day. No, I'm not going to the game. All oh, right, fair enough. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're heading yeah. down, so... Uh, they like paint in the town black and um, whatever there's the defender of colours down there in Duneside, mate. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? So I'm paint- heading out. That's why, I'll, yeah, I'm mate at Duneside after the game. I'll be taking a drive through Mountie County and all the Penrith areas. Yeah, yeah. I might have. If Penrith win, I might have to take the the, the wife for a drive through there before we head home. Yeah, don't make eye contact. Lock doors, mate. <laughs> oh, we'll just, take her. Just a heads up. We'll just t- a heads up. We'll take her truck, so we'll just drive over the top of them. 
Fair enough. Anyway, mate, thanks for your call and uh, enjoy the rest of the show and enjoy the enjoy the uh, grand final on the weekend and let's hope the Knights girls and the Penrith boys can bring it home. Well, for some of us. Yeah, well, that's what I'll... I just don't like Parramatta. But. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night. All right, thanks, thanks man. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, it's time for caller number four. Who we got there? Well, hello, crew. It's Simon again. How are you? Oh, hey, Simon. Simon uh, good. Uh, the grand final, mate. Grand final this week. Well, yes, I just ran to congratulate that handsome, handsome, handsome floor boy, Gary, for his... Uh, worms getting into the grand final. Yeah, four boys, Gary. He wor- his worm has gone into the grand <laughs> final. Yes, I believe it's a bit old and wrinkled now, but it still works. <laughs> yeah, they haven't been there for a while. It's uh, been a long time between dances. Mm. So I'm, I'm hoping he's uh, enjoying this week before uh, this weekend. Yes, uh, yeah, he's uh, worms are playing the uh, crazy ladies Panthers. Well, I hope it wasn't too tense in there this evening. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, they were all right. Had to separate them a couple of times, but no, nah, they weren't too bad. But, mate, oh, uh, have you, how's Terence? Have you found Terence? Look, I have no idea where he's gone to. So, at the moment, I'm actually. Uh, well, it's funny how this show brings people together. Uh, not long ago, somebody called in from Germany, if you remember. And uh, he decided to come for a trip. So at the moment, I'm hanging out with my friend Helmut. <laughs> oh, there you go. Helmut. Yes, Helmut's here, and uh, I, I quite like Helmut. <laughs> um, <laughs> there you go, Helmut. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, hello. <laughs> Maybe we get two yeah. for the price Helmut. of one. This is Helmut from Dusseldorf. How are you? Hey. Hey, good, mate. How are you finding... Um, where have you? Where are you at? I'm not. I mean, it is is yeah. Turak. Turak. Oh, right. That's it. That's it. I couldn't remember. Turak. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. It's uh. Yeah, we got we got some weirdos over here. Yeah, but it it is it is quite delightful. The beer is a bit uh. It's just wonderful journey to be here, and I'm very happy to be here. Are you um gonna check on check in on the grand final this weekend, Helmut? Well, perhaps I'm. I've been checking out plenty of things already with with Simon, and uh, uh, I hope we get a chance to. Yeah, mate. Uh, who's your pick for the uh, grand final? Well, well, to be honest, I picked Bayern Munich, but they're not playing. <laughs> Who, sorry? <laughs> wrong channel. Oh, right. right. That was uh, SBS, I think. <laughs> I think you wrote quite a wrong um, podcast. <laughs> uh, I'm still learning this game. Anyway, here's Simon again. Lovely to speak to you. Yeah, thanks, Helmut. Uh, uh, yeah, take well, care and enjoy okay. your, your, yeah, enjoy uh, your stay. Yeah, enjoy your stay down under. Uh, and go to the Panthers. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. No. Yeah, that's right. Uh, oh. Hello, boys. I'm back again. Mm. Oh, yeah, good to see you've uh, found another friend. Well, one can never have too many friends, can one? Um, yeah. Been a uh, good party tonight if Terence comes back. Well, if, to be quite honest, I don't, I don't know where he's going or where he's been. Oh, and, yeah. uh, he, it, um, I'm, look, I'm a little bit distraught, but... Um, oh, well, Helmut can, you know, can help you out. I'm sure yes, he Helmut, filling that large hole in, that I need, so... Oh, so who, who did you pick for the grand final? Oh, look, I think it's hard to go past Penrith. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing the Eagles win for, for handsome floor boy, Gary, but uh, mm. which team has the most Kiwis? Uh, I would say Panthers have got a mm. few. Mm. They're a bit weird, those Kiwis. Well, we do have a Kiwi on our show called... Scotty across the ditch. Mm. Oh yes, no, I, I know of him, but um, I think there. Oh, did I ever tell you? I, I, I knew a Kiwi once, and he thought the Canning Stop route was an annual event. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no, you haven't. But <laughs> <laughs> gee whiz, bro. <laughs> so what? Yes. So it's the Panthers, is it? 
Oh, look, I think it's hard to go past them. After they put the foot down the other day, it was uh, it was all over Red Rover after half time, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, but you'd still like to see Gary's River Worm get up. Well, that silver haired god, I'd love to see him smile. <laughs> Oh, you just never know. I'll tell you what, we'll put it out there. He's beating his chest right now. If <laughs> if it is. the river worms get up, right, I want you to call in next week because I'll <laughs> I'll even get Floorboy Gary on for the segment. Oh, that would be lovely. I'd love to have a, a one-on-one with him. And he'll do a gosling live. Oh, <laughs> Well, let's go eels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, mate. Uh, we appreciate your call, but um, yeah, I hope you and Terence sort um, you touch base with Terence soon, and um, mm. we may or may not hear from you next week, depending on uh, on the score. But uh, keep an eye on the game this week. You might see the crazy lady and myself there. Well, well, well done for getting tickets and, and good luck, of course. And uh, yes, I do hope that um, Terence appears somewhere because, to be quite honest, this helmet's a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure Helmet can find out, tell you where he's Frank, where Frankfurt is. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Weird. Uh, yeah. <laughs> weird in what way? Uh, you know, these Germans are a bit odd too. Germans and Kiwis are all a bit funny. Yeah, well, we got a, f- a friend that's a bit weird, but he's not on the show tonight. We might get him on next week. But um, any, man, any man with a name Helmet, it seems a bit funny to me, don't you think? Yeah, I suppose. Uh-huh. Oh. As, far, as far as I know, a German Helmet is something completely different. <laughs> Especially the last name of Schlobbernocker too, like... <laughs> oh, 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 I forgot to. I had a we had an email from um, Mr. Vaseline. Oh, Christopher, how is that, darling man? We have not seen him actually. He's gone mm. missing. So, um, oh, oh no, hang on. Maybe he's with he's with Terence. You could be. Yeah. Well, well, that, I, the last scene, I, the last heard I saw of Chrissy was um, at the women's training sessions this afternoon. Yeah, it's like where's Wally, but it's, where's Christopher? He's gone uh, missing. Yeah, he's a ruggedly handsome man, though. Yeah, um, yeah. He um, wanted us to pass on his thanks for the birthday wishes. Oh, any time. If I had my way, I would have jumped out of a cake. <laughs> I'd say you probably would have had it too. But anyway, that's for a different show. But anyway, mate, we appreciate your call. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll hear, well, maybe not. We might hear from you, may not, next week, depending on the score of the game. Well, I'm sure I will have had enough of this old helmet by then. And who knows, I might be free anyway. Uh, speaking of... Um, which, what do you think of the video of uh, Jesse Sue we had on earlier? Oh, I think it's delightful. Lovely, uh, lovely touch. So well done, boys. And um, good way to honour a, a, a humble and loyal servant of the club. Yeah, absolute champion guy on and off the field. Mm. He'll be sorely missed, but I thought you'd enjoy that. Anyway, well, mate. Yeah. Uh, Big yeah, and dark and and why wouldn't I enjoy it? Yes, I thought so. But, um, oh, we'll talk to you soon, hopefully, and, um, yeah, give our best to Helmet. Oh, well, yes, I might um, play with Helmet a bit later and, <laughs> and give, give him your regards. Oh, so, oh. Anyway, Gary's worm's just going up again. Oh, on that note, we might take a short break and come back shortly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, and we'll do one more call, caller. Caller number five, who we got? Yeah, good day, guys. It's the Sasquatch from Kabashi here. How are you? Hey, mate, how are you? Yeah, doing all right yourself? Yeah, good, buddy. Mate, uh, happy birthday for the last week. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you for that. Um, and not before time either. I hope, I hope Kylie felt guilty. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you might want to watch the start of the show. Okay, very I'm looking forward to it already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mate, I just rang to wish uh, your precious Portia a happy birthday. Oh, God love you. Yeah, she's uh, a big eight. Thinks she's 18. 
Oh, yeah, I've got a 16-year-old who's going on four, so don't worry, it changes as they get older. Well, we've known it's her birthday for the last, I'd say, six weeks. She tells us, my birthday soon, my birthday soon, so... Yeah, and then there's Christmas coming. Yeah, yeah, don't tell me about that. God help us. (laughs) Yeah, no, a big happy birthday, Portia, um, from all of us on the podcast, and Dad and Mum and Cruz and Braden and Sissy. Everyone... So, uh, happy birthday, Dale. Yeah, grow into that wonderful young lady you're becoming. Yeah, God helps growing up too quick. And so, help your mum and dad. <laughs> yeah, no, they're pretty good, I must admit. Our kids, they, they help us out. So, um, Thanks, Juan. Mate, appreciate your call and so does Portia. And uh, what, while we got you here, mate, we appreciate every single thing you do for us. Excuse me, week in, week out. Um, ah, your, good. your work is uh, unreal. Oh, I, I enjoy it, mate. But uh, it's um, it's uh, good to be part of the team. No, and, uh, you're to a huge part asset. Of, uh, what, what's coming? And um, if we keep going at this the way we're going, by I don't know another thirty years, we should be able to draw a li- li- living wage from the program. <laughs> I'll, prob- I'll probably be dead by then. But anyway, <laughs> you, you, you enjoy my legacy. <laughs> 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 uh, it's all good, no, mate. It's, it's great, and that's uh, um, it's uh, well, you know, well, thanks to Jai, really, because he was the one who said the night fan and got involved in the first place. Then we did that stupid video, if you remember. Oh, uh, yes, actually, no, he held me hostage. Um, we he must was, say uh, that has had a we've had quite a few emails or messages. Oh, really? Wanting to see another one of them videos. Oh, true. Yes, they loved Because I put it up there the other week for a bit of, you know, flashbacks. Yeah, and yeah. I had a heap of people comment saying, when are you going to do a new one? We've, okay. Because you know, oh. we've got new cat, new panel members and all that yeah, kind no, of Yeah, no, no. I was talking about the video where he was beating me up to be a Knights fan. He was oh, me yeah, you know, that was good too. Well, that's where it all started. But, yeah, I will have to... um. We'll have to, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get on there when he gets back because I believe you, you actually caught up with him. Yeah, I did last week. Me and the crazy lady caught up with him at the Kent there. Um, also, a big on his behalf, a big shout-out to the Kent Hotel that um, helped him out with a, an issue they had there. Um, and, yeah, it was pretty terrible that the, the night wasn't looking like it was going to go ahead. And they helped uh, Jai and his, um, you know, um, school reunion, go ahead and fix mm. it all up. So Jai will come on next year and tell us all about it. But a yeah, big yeah. shout out to them because you know he come all the way from Western Australia and it looked like it might not happen, and they jumped in and helped him out and made it happen. So mm. a big thank you to them. Yeah, I spoke to him today, and I think he's had to go down through Canberra and then Mildura because you've got horrible weather over there. Ah, uh, yeah, it's coming and going. We don't mm. seem to have a lot of it at the moment, but it's coming. Mm. Yeah. So. Uh, so- yeah, we're supposed to get we're supposed to get rain for the next four days. A little bit of rain this morning, but hasn't had any any more since. So. Yeah. Anyway, mate, we appreciate your call. We appreciate everything you do. A big part of our team, and uh, look forward to talking to you again. Yeah, no, definitely, mate. And uh, well, with next year, hopefully we can get a bit more. I don't know, virtual face to face. Yeah, yeah, there'll be a lot more of that. Don't worry. <laughs> I suppose I better start learning that stuff now. So, <laughs> mate. Uh, anyway, um, we yeah, we might take a, our next call. I think we got another caller on the line. So, uh, yeah, talk to you soon, champion. Be good, guys. See you, mate. See ya. Oh, right, guys, See ya. time for caller number six. Oh, All right, guys, it's time for caller number six. Who we got? Hey, all, this is Kermity Frog here, and just want to say, <laughs> yay, grand final. Yeah, no, it should be good. <laughs> Hello? Well, that was short and sweet, Kermit, but yeah, thanks yeah. anyway. All right, guys, we're going to take a short break, a short like that call, and uh, I'll be back shortly. <laughs> All right, guys, and welcome back, and... Um, Time for Team List Tuesday. So we might start off uh, 
Do the women's first and the do men's? The women's, yeah. Because uh, that's the order yeah. in how it will happen on the day. That's exactly right. So uh, I'll do the Knights. You want to do the Eels? Yeah, I can do that. Yep. Uh, so fullback Tamika Upton uh, on the wing. We got Karina, Karina Takarangi. Is that correct? Kiana. Kiana, Shanice Parker, and Bobby Wall in the centres. Mli Parker, Pakai. That's close enough. Close enough. Yeah. Uh, Kira Dib playing really well too. Yeah. I see. Um, Jesse Southall. They they make up the halves. Caitlin Johnson and Millie Boyle in the front row with Olivia Higgins in the, the hooker. Uh, Romy Teitzel and Yasmin Clydesdale in the second row with the Curry Girl. Um, Kayla. Play, yeah, Kayla. Romanuk. Romanuk. Oh. She gets a call up to the start line. Did she start last week? No, I don't, don't yeah, think she so. did. She did, yeah. And then okay, because the week before, before she, she came off the debut. bench. Okay. Debuted and there straight into the start line. So she's playing good football. Mm. Um, our Kurt Mann on the side, Emma Manzelman. Um, Taylor Pettiborn, I think she's a gun too. Yeah, she is. Mm. She's an absolute powerhouse. Um, Simone Caparani and Mackenzie Wheel. So if I've got any of them pronunciations wrong, do apologise. Uh, to keep, sorry, before you go, to, um, to keep uh, Caitlin Marine and a few others there, um, it's um, not a bad feat either. To... Yeah, so... Uh, you got Kara Simon, Tiara Davidson, um, Jessica Gentle. Yeah. yeah, Gentle. Well, she played well the other day. Tasman mm. Barber and uh, Caitlin, obviously, on the bench. So, mm. um, yeah. Casey Badger's the referee. So, mm. uh, she, I reckon she just that's it, too. But mm. uh, I got a Eels team where you have the lineup. That's exactly right. Now, we'll start with number one, uh, Gail Broughton. On the wings are Zali Fay and Cassie Toe. Hi Hiku. In the centres is Abby Church and, and Rakia Horn. 5'8 is Ashley Quinlan. Five, uh, halfback is Taylor Preston. Uh, front row, Kennedy Charrington and Eli Johnson. Brooke Anderson is the hooker. And in the second row is Christian Pio and Vanessa Folawaki and Simamaya Tafua. And on the bench is uh, Hanisi. I'm not going to pronounce that first game. That's first name. That's pretty hard. Celia Malalungi, Nevada George, and Rima Butler. There's oh. your there's your team for Parramatta. I wonder if uh, number thirteen Tafua, uh, old Knights Mark Tafua, maybe yeah. in relation. Yeah. Was he was a good player? Um, how do you see this? Obviously, we've spoken about it before, but uh, Knights and me. Yeah. Yep. yep. I think uh, Parramatta played their grand final last week. Yep. So um. So. There, do they have Norm Proven or is it some? It's uh, oh. Tasha Gale or what do they could have? Be, it could be Tasha Gale actually. Yeah. Tasha Gale medal. Yeah. yeah. So okay, so the player of the match in the grand final will be for me. Um, I'm going to go with Millie Boyle, Caitlin Johnson, to make her Upton. Um, but oh, honestly, I'd like to give a minute sp- special mention award, mm. and I reckon that. One of the younger guns like Southwell or mm. Johnson, mm. mate, you know, mm. obviously come Maybe through. Maybe even Kira Dib too. She's, yeah. Yeah, she's been playing really There's well. There's a few there that could that take it. Number 14, Emma, she's been playing really yeah. well. Yeah. Kurt yeah. Mann yeah. in the side. That's, mm. that's right. The, the team's been pretty much unchanged mm. all year. So, like... And, and like uh, Crazy Lady said earlier, we're uh, saying that to make her up and said she's never enjoyed a football so much. Mm. That's a good sign. Mm. And that's what... The key to Penrith's success is that's right. Jerome, Lewine, all that—they're mm-hmm. just having a ball, having good football. Mm. So I think our men's side need to take a good look mm. at the women. That's right, and I, and for your for your sake, with the new teams coming in next year, I mm. hope this nucleus of the side together. stay yeah. stay together. That'd be good. Go back to back too. Like yeah, whether we win or yeah, not. Yeah, that's right. Know, yeah, back back performances. Yeah. Um, so while we're there, a bold prediction. Oh, Newcastle thirty six to six for me. Yeah, Newcastle thirteen plus with Caitlin Johnson and it's time try scorer. Yeah. Anyone? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well for me try scorer and um, yeah. To make her I'll probably go in there anytime try mm. scorer. Yeah. A uh, bold one, make a bold. Alright. Um well I did say Shanice Parker, I think 
So I think you know, go with, go with Smokey, someone mm-hmm. outside the, the the ones that are normal, ones that are high profile. So no, I think in that Emma, I can't pronounce her name. Men's or men? No, or, or come, Emma Emma Nita Packer no, coming off the bench. Oh. yeah, Emma Men's or men? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think she might. You, you just stole, stole mine. That's what I was going to say. Rich, you'll come on like an happy chorus here mm-hmm. and carve them up in the middle and go over. So that was mine. So. Anyway, uh, yeah, on to the men's. Uh, well, good luck to um, the Knights women's team. Yeah. Um, as we said before, um, to those ones that are out injured, that this is also for them as well. That's yeah. right. Yeah, Autumn and, um, and, and Hannah Southwell. Mm. So. But they'll dead say they'll be on the sideline anyway. But mm. yeah, if you. If you're down that way, get out there and support the girls and let's try to bring it home. Think it, what time there is you it? go, at four o'clock on oh. Sunday. Mm. Uh, we'll be there. So, um, yeah, I'll be shouting on and crazy lady will be too because she gets right into the, the nights as well. So, uh, good. yeah, time for the big one, the big mm. dance, the men's side. Um, the Panthers are up against the Eels. Battle of the West. Yes, um... Mm. Probably the two form teams that really deserve to be there, I feel. Mm. Um, yeah, it's going to be a cracker of a game. Mm. Uh, excuse me. Been a long day. Uh, number one, Dylan Edwards. Two, Charlie Staines. Charlie Staines um, retains his spot because... Yeah, Taylor May didn't um, come up. Huge loss, I think. Because yeah. um, Taylor May is more capable of handling... Mike Acevo then Staines, I feel. Anyway, Isaac Tago and Stephen Crichton in the centres. Brian Tuttle on the wing. Jerome Lloyd and Nathan Cleary in the halves. Mr. Un- underrated himself, Moses Leota and James Fisher-Harris in the front row with Appy Coruscant at hooker. Uh, last ever game for Viliamu Kikau. Liam Martin and Isaiah Yeo. Mm. The bench here I like in Mitch Kenny, Scott Sorensen, Spencer Linu and Jamin Salmon. Does, um, I'm guessing Linu has passed these uh, HIA protocols? Yeah, must have, yeah. yeah. But I'll tell you what. <sighs> Matthew Eisenhoof, 19. He's played good all year. Play, come in when, you know... Uh, Fish is suspended or Moses was injured and just played all year. Hasn't put a foot wrong. And I know Ivan can't pick everyone, but he doesn't get a start either on interchange or anything. You've got to feel for blokes like that. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, he'll probably suit up and be on the sideline and be a mix of it. But, yeah, this is also, you know. Same with Sean Sullivan, though, Sullivan too. Mm. I mean, you yeah, know, look, he's not going to get behind Lil White yeah. and that, but. You know, he's, you know, but I suppose he is the 18th man. So, you know, if something does happen. Miles. You know. All right, I'll, I'll put a bold prediction over here straight away now. Spencer Leno will probably go off HIA. Yeah. Well, that's probably not real bold, is it? Yeah. <laughs> the way he goes. Well, I think, it, what, I think you need, like, a foul play for someone mm. to, to, for the 18th to, um, to be um, yeah, introduced. True. Or you have free... Um, yeah, HIAs know. during the game that are not played. That's how you can mm. bring them in as well. So yeah. you wouldn't want that. But uh, Parramatta team, mate. Yeah, mate. All right. Uh, so number one and um, captain Clint Gutherson, um, Mike Acevo, Will Penasini, and Bailey Simonson, and Wonga Blake are the th- three quarters. Five eight Dylan Brown, halfback Mitch Moses, front row Regan Campbell Gillard, and Junior Polo. And playing his last game for Parramatta is Reed Marnie. Um, second row, Sean Lane, who's I believe has probably been one of the standout players this season too. Uh, Isaiah Papalili, who potentially might be playing his last game for Parramatta. Yeah, well, I'd like to know what's going on there. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask the same question. Yeah. Mm. And um, locking the scrum, um, the ever reliable Ryan Madison um, on the bench. Now here's a here's a one. Nathan Brown back into the squad this week. Um, and then you got Jake Arthur, Oregon Kafusi, and Marata Nick Niakore, who's actually leaving for the Warriors as well for next year. Mm. So, and I think in your 18th man, I believe, is what you've got here, Bryce Cartwright. Yeah, so I just think this is where it could be one, too, with the benches. 
I just think Penrith may be just that little bit better than Parramatta mm-hmm. with Jake Arthur. And, yeah, I don't know. I could be wrong, but I also think that... Here's a, board, here's a prediction for you. I don't think it's real bored. Nathan Brown will lock horns with either Spencer Lino, Liam Martin, or Viliamo kick out. Mm. It will happen. He'll lock horns with one of them three. Well, the bench, the bench does it for me, you know, for for Penrith over. Well, I don't, I don't mind Oregon, Kafusi and Murata Nirakore. They've been good players. Nirakore, yeah, yeah, I do. I rate yeah. him, and he can slide out in the centres if you know someone gets injured out there. So um, it's just, yeah, I think okay, Mitchell Moses gets hurt. I touch what he doesn't, but goes off. Can't come back on. You put Jake Arthur on. Floor Gary, do you win? Possibly not, but uh, I was talking to a bloke the other day, and uh, I, I think it was Papa here, I'm not sure, said that if Mitch goes off, they've got a halfback that fills in, opposed to putting someone that's out of position. Mm. There and the back line or whatever. I just seen the way he played against Penner for that week, and I just thought he's not ready for first grade yet. Could you he's play? Player, but needs another year or so. Mm. Gaz, Gaz, could you play Dylan Brown at say halfback? Clint Gutherson go into five eight, and you can throw someone like uh, Wonga Blake at fullback. Yeah, that'd be nice yeah, for no, Penner. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, you throw say maybe um, Bailey Simonson at fullback because I'm pretty sure he's played there before, and you bring in. Um, Nia Kore to play in the centres. This is just hypothetically. Mm. You just yeah. wouldn't want to restructure it that much. Yeah. yeah. Less I think is that's po- a big, less I think that's better. what Brad's doing. Mm. Getting his son ready, bleeding his blood in him a bit. Mm. But like um, they said, he goes straight into halfback. And it was probably, he said in one of the papers, he said, um, we all know our own position. So we've got no problem with him coming into play. At the halfback. Mm. Well, they could, yeah. There's a, there's, a, there's a plus for it, and there's a big minus for it as well. I just and think he also got could the experience. But guys, he might so even surprise us too. You just never know. I just think that I'm Ivan Cleary. My game plan is Wonga Blake is going to get bomb like a bomb raid all day. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then I'll be sending the traffic like Viliamu, Liam Martin. Those kind of people at Mitchell Moses. Yep. So, hmm. Well, anyway. You'd think that... Um, but it's um, pretty much like any team. You run at um, Nathan hmm. or Latrell, which they did, and it shuts, like I said, it That's 80, right. 85% shuts the team down. See, but where Penrith was so successful against Parramatta the last couple of weeks... Was when the likes of, you know, Sean Lane or Pavlidi were coming through, Penrith's back rowers and front rowers were blocking them. Yeah. And they get in, give Nathan time to move, and he had no chance, no no trouble. Yeah. So that's where, you know, I think a lot of it will, the kick pressure, um, you know, like, uh, I think it was, what was the former Storm halfback, what's his name? Played with Roosters as well. Oh, I can't think of his name now, memory blank. Um, oh, not Cooper Cronk. Yeah, Cooper Cronk. He said, come out, uh, be saying to Reed Marnie, give him away a penalty early, I don't care. But put Nathan Cleary on his ass and rattle him mm. at the start. But and then also uh, he came out in the same sentence too and he said, Cleary is, like they were talking about, is Cleary as good as Cronk? Cronk said, I've got nothing on him. Uh, he's exceptional. He said he sits at home and studies the opposition for hours and hours. He said, this kid is going to pass everything. Mm. So, I mean, that's coming from <coughs> a, a pretty handy player. Yeah. Mm. And then John says the same thing. So Yeah, well, Cooper Cron will probably be immortal mm. one day. So, uh, so. Two, well, one immortal and one future immortal. I reckon that yeah. this kid's going to... Because realistically, he's still only a kid. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Mm, but what he can do with that ball is... Well, that's the way to... I think that's probably the one way to beat in Penrith, in my opinion, is if we get, get in his face and try and get him, not much to, to time with the, so this is with where, the kick. 
that's you know I'd be if I was not even clear I'd be going look this is going to happen they're going to try yeah. and get my face and that's fine yeah but you Jerome have to be ready mm. and on my outside because if they're going to come at me I'm just going to pop you the ball straight away and that's you right. just carve it up yeah so this is where Jerome's got to step up and go mm. okay and clearly be ready for it and when mm. they're coming at him even if he's got time we'll mm. just go pop yeah and Jerome can ever do his little magic dart or take some of the pressure off clear. Mm. So then, when they're coming through, and he's got them on his outside, they're going to be guessing here. Is he going to pass it? So then he can go, dummy, and around. Mm. You know, just, that's what we've been saying all year with the Knights. Keep the defence guessing. And I think, you know, do that at the grand final. Yep. Got to. Anyway, bold predictions. Any others? I suppose no, I mean, that's about it. No, nah, yeah. I mean, no. I mean, I don't really, it's you know, itself, Penrith. Really. Yeah, mm. it's not a real bold. Right. We'll just Penrith, Newcastle, Penrith, Newcastle. Yeah, Penrith, Newcastle, Penrith, Newcastle. Penrith, Newcastle. <laughs> Parramatta, Parramatta. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think that wraps it up for this week. Um, yeah. yeah, so don't forget to put in your pick the scores and who's going to win, mm. um, and we will do. Our chocolate world next week for the winners. Twenty five winners will be on the board for for it, and um, yeah, we'll have some consolation prizes as well. But I'd also like to thank our sponsors for the whole year for what we've done. And a big shout out to Burton Automotive; they've been exceptionally well. Shannon from Pernell Trophies, uh, Muso's Corner, Johnny Sayers, I think, and um, also a big shout out to uh, Steak and Chops Terry up there. Yep, and um, we'll throw in our new sponsor that come on earlier this year was that Grand Mantriarch Distillery Vodka Company. 100%. And yeah. uh, don't forget that we've um, the tipping comp, Aussie Direct. Aussie Direct, yeah. Huge shout out to Aussie yep. Direct, and there's one week left for that. Newcastle Live and Hymix. Yep. Um, yeah, Musos, as I've probably said. And, and uh, Newcastle City Sports Power. Yeah, so without all you guys, we. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you very you. much. Yeah, so uh, we mm. look forward to next week will be our last show for the year, unfortunately. Mm. Um, but yeah, we need a break for uh, future plans that we're we're looking at. Yeah. So um, yeah, a new panelist coming on perhaps, and uh, we're speaking to a lot of special guests for next year as well too. Mm. But there's some big news next week that we'll have more info on that um, something for you guys to attend to. So mm. yeah. Uh, happy birthday, Porsche, once again, yeah. and yeah, go the birthday. Knights, go the Panthers, and Shout once a night. Always a night. Good night. Good night. Burton Automotive. Burton Automotive. Burton Automotive. Burton Automotive. Burton Automotive. Burton Automotive. Pretty frog here. <laughs> <laughs>